Hey guys, I'm back, and today I'm going to do a slightly different video than I normally do. I'm going to talk about the book that turned my health around, okay? And the name of that book was Mastering the Zone uh, by Barry Sears, PhD. His first book was The Zone, if I'm not mistaken, and then he, he wrote a book called Mastering the Zone as his second um, book, but don't quote me on that. That's just my thought. And I'm going to read to you the one line that I had this huge epiphany, okay? So first I'm gonna read in chapter one, and then there's this basically a little paragraph in chapter one and a little paragraph in chapter two, okay? So this is, actually I didn't even read the rest of the book. I just read these two paragraphs I scanned. Okay, obviously fat was not the enemy. If fat isn't the enemy, then what is? The answer is insulin. It's excess insulin that makes you fat and keeps you fat. And your body produces excessive amounts of insulin when you eat either too many fat-free carbohydrates or too many calories at a meal. Now I'm gonna come back to this because this is where the problem is, that he didn't explain this well enough, but I'm gonna, I'll come back to that. Therefore, when you talk about the zone, it is really the zone of insulin. Now I didn't even know that before I read the book. I did not know he was talking about the insulin zone. Not too high, not too low, a zone of insulin controlled by your diet. Okay, that was in chapter one. Chapter two, but more important, protein is so vital because it stimulates the hormone glucagon. Now, chapter one is talking about insulin being the problem, and I talk about that a lot, but there's another hormone called glucagon that does the opposite to insulin. Okay, it'll suppress insulin. They both work on a teeter-totter mechanism. And protein will stimulate glucagon. Exercise will stimulate glucagon. Carbs stimulate insulin. So glucagon has the opposite physiological action to insulin. In fact, and this is the line that blew me away. In fact, glucagon acts as a major governor of excess insulin production. And it was at that time where I was like, wow. Now, I, I, I learned this in school, but it never really connected with what you eat. And then he goes into this. It is excess insulin that makes you fat, makes you hungry, makes you mentally foggy, decreases your physical performance, and increases the likelihood of chronic disease. Now, at the time, I was extremely exhausted with brain fog starving all the time. I didn't know why. So I replaced my, my cereal for breakfast with, I think I had a, uh, it was a buffalo burger the first time. And then I think the second time I had some fish and it was like someone took a helmet off my head. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel so much better. So that was when I started telling all my patients, oh, you need to start having a protein breakfast. And I wrote in my book and the whole thing. And, and that went on for a couple of years. But then I stumbled on some additional information, which took me to the next level. And it really had to do with what Barry originally said in chapter one with these, this eating. If you eat in general, anything significant with calories, um, this is going to affect insulin. So at the time, I didn't really get it. But looking back on it, this is just basically eating. So eating, the frequency of eating, and the carbs. So when I introduced intermittent fasting and I cut the breakfast right out, I eliminated this part of the insulin equation and eliminated this. And then I started going, my health started going higher and higher and higher. So that's pretty much what I teach right now. Now, the problem with mastering the zone is that um, he's recommending 40% fat, 30% protein, and 30% carbs. He's allowing way too many carbs. Even in the zone bar that he sells, there's soy protein, low quality, tapioca starch, corn syrup, and sugar. So I'm not even recommending this book. Um, what you should do is healthy keto and intermittent fasting. So your fat is 70% and your protein is 20%. And your overall carbs are really like 10%, but you're not really counting the vegetables, but the vegetables would be like 5% because it's mostly fiber and water. And then 5% low glycemic carbs like um, hummus or the carbs in nuts or the carbs in berries, something like that. 
So in summary, I do appreciate the data that he has in this book. Um, the problem is knowing what the vital data is and what data that might not be vital or might not be true. And sometimes you don't know until you really try it out. Well, I'm going to tell you that this formula right here, healthy keto and intermittent fasting, has been thoroughly tested on a large amount of people that I'm working with that are in social media. So if you're new to this, I put a link down below of exactly what you should be eating. And lastly, in the comments, I want you to tell me when you came across some information or some concept that turned your health around, if it was a book or a video, go ahead and put that down below because I'm really curious. Thanks for watching.